हेलो पाइथन स्टार्स हेलो चेन्नई एंड हेलो वर्ल्ड वी आर हियर टू प्रेजेंट ऑन परफॉर्मेंस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन विद इलास्टिक सर्च आई एम अनिश्वनी दास एंड शी इज़ अनिशा स्वाई एंड बिफोर वी गो फॉरवर्ड विद द टॉक वी वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर सेल्स वी बोथ आर रेड हैटर्स एंड वी आर एक्टिव ओपन सोर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर्स एंड स्पीकिंग अबाउट अनिशा शी इज रिसर्च फेलो विद इंडियन अकेडमी ऑफ साइंसिस एंड शी इज़ ऑल्सो नाथस आई एल हैंड ओवर द कंट्रोल टू अनिशा राइट नाउ sorry for that uh, so first we will talk about basic elastic search and its architecture and uh, then manushuni will show you some of the demos how exactly we index data in elastic search and so on and at the end i will tell about how the techniques that we can use to increase the performance in when we are using elastic search so uh, what is elastic search elastic search is a distributed search and analytics engine and please mark the word powerful it's a very powerful system elastic search is the heart of elastic stack in elastic stack we use logstash and beads to collect and aggregate data by aggregate i mean i mean uh, do more analysis on the data and we use visual uh, kibana for visualization uh in elastic search we can store uh, both structured and unstructured data and just not text data as uh, we can store numerical and uh, geospatial data as well and uh, yeah it's comparatively easier than other uh, analytics and search engines so this is the uh, the uh, whole uh, structure of uh, elastic stack we use beads to collect the data and then logstars aggregate and analyze on the collected data elastic elastic search uh, index it and store it and uh, after that we visualize the data in kibana elastic search uh, also provides a premium version of uh, of the uh, software which is called xpack which uh, also gives security alerting when there is a problem in the system monitoring and uh, also some machine learning analysis so uh, why elastic search elastic search is a persistent data storage uh, which is a, di a distributed document store it uh, it stores data in a serialized json format which makes it makes it very reliable and very fast the search time is uh, approximately 1 second so yeah it has very high indexing rate which is approximately 2 to 3 times of normal indexing uh, it uh, provides sequential input output pattern and uh, yeah it uh, also index uh, schema less data with the uh, dynamic mapping it can uh, automatically detect and add new fields in the data new fields and data types uh, when you we are uh, storing the data it's very easy to maintain data in elastic search because of its uh, scalability uh, elastic source uh, elastic search is a, a physical collection of documents we can distribute the documents over uh, various nodes and the nodes can again be distributed uh, in a cluster so if we need we, if our data is uh, increasing then we can simply add more nodes to the cluster and scale it for uh, faster search elastic search uses uh, data structures like inverted index kdb which uh, gives approximately real time full text queries and uh, as i said uh, uh, ability of clustering and ease of data maintenance Uh, we can also write three types of uh, queries to for elastic search structured queries like we write in sql or full text queries like query dsl and we can also combine both to make complex queries now we'll hand over to manushuni to talk about the basic architecture thank you anisha uh yeah as you can see right here there are uh, in a node there are two shards one is uh, in a you know a uh, dark blue color and then uh, it's a light blue color both of them are shards so each uh, shard contains a collection of documents and uh, these documents are distributed over shards and there are a collection of shards which are distributed over nodes and all these nodes are distributed over clusters as is already mentioned by anisha uh, elastic search is a logical grouping of physical shards and each document is a part of a primary shard and obviously we can have a repl replica of a primary shard so what are primary and replica shards here we can see there are three nodes but we'll concentrate on the first two nodes uh, there is one primary uh, shard one replica shard but the rep you can note this that the replica shard of uh, the first node is there in the second node that is in case if the second uh, you know the first node clashes then 
there is second node which can you know give a hot reload of the data moving on to performance consideration about shard sizes as discussed before if the shard uh, the number of shards increases the cluster will grow and so there is always a maintenance problem the larger the shards it is difficult to move it within the elastic search so obviously it depends average shard size is from few gb to 10 a few tens of gb nodes need to be in the same network for each uh, search engine inside a cluster cross cluster replication Cross cl cluster replication is a, a type of replication in which uh, a copy of the remote cluster is stored in a local cluster. So this is uh, used to provide backup. Uh, for uh, anyone who doesn't know here, uh, Elasticsearch also has a Python client uh, by the name of uh, Elasticsearch Pi. Uh, if you want to know more, you can just go to this link. Uh, it's demo time. So. Uh, I already have Kibana in Elasticsearch uh, set up in my device. I'll just check. So, yeah. Uh, looking to the first query, I'm trying to index some documents. So, uh, this contains a put request. Uh, we can also have a post request, but the difference is put request can have an ID that we have right here. Uh, post request doesn't need to have an ID. Uh, there can be a hash value that is automatically given to it. If we run this, uh, we get uh, this answer. So, yeah. Uh, here we have a total of two shards, uh, one successful shard. And since this is already indexed, we can just uh, run a get command. So, yeah, we have it right here. Uh, we can, uh, as we have already indexed it, we can also try to delete it. Yeah, so here we can see the result is deleted. Um, so um, I have tried to, uh, you know, uh, do this, uh, you know, uh, indexing of uh, bulk of documents. Uh, we already have uh, accounts.json that is already there in the uh, website of Elasticsearch. So if you want to, you know, look at the database, you can go there and look. So. Yeah, let us come uh, just uh, have a look at the re response that we have received. The took key value shows the amount of milliseconds that Elasticsearch has taken to produce the response. Uh, timed out is just to check whether the search has timed out or not. Uh, shards means uh, the number of shards that it is looking for, looking into. It is a total of one shard, and we have one successful chart. Hits means the number of result that is received. And here we can see 1,000. And relation is equal. And uh, moving on to score. Score is like how well the data matches, uh, matches with the search query. So here we have a maximum score of 1.0. So these are the hits. Elasticsearch provides a, a default of 10 documents. So we can see 10 documents right here. Uh, we can also have a match query, a uh, match query in which, uh, suppose we want to match a particular, uh, you know, here, right here we have an example. That is, we, have, we want to match uh, whether, like, the account number should be 20. So here we re uh, write a match query, and if we run it, we have one successful shard, and we have one hit. Okay, moving on, we also have a bool query which gives a uh, a response with when only the output is true. Uh, so here we have a match query again, uh, where the address should be either mill or lane. Uh, if we just run it, we get this value of 19 hits. Then we move on to executing filters. So Elasticsearch has two types of contexts. Uh, like uh, two types of query DSLs that would say uh, query context and filter context. So this is the filter context. Filter context, uh, as you might be knowing, if you guys are already using Flipkart, that everyone uses, like Flipkart, Amazon, all of that. So we have a filter feature where uh, we can, you know, uh, have uh, T-shirts with uh, full sleeves or not full sleeves. So it just should match. Yeah. Uh, summarizing, uh, we indexed some documents, we uh, did some put and post requests, uh, we deleted some, uh, uh, like deleted some documents, 
uh, we conduct uh, like uh, ran a match query, bool query, executed filters. Uh, when you are coming across Elasticsearch, we always get to cross this world, come across this word called aggregations, which just provides an ability to extract statistics from the data. That is, uh, we can uh, conduct a lot of SQL group by queries or queries similar to that. Uh, this is very powerful and efficient. That is, we can run a query within a query. And we can run queries and multiple aggregations and multiple of these queries all together, like in a nested manner as well. Get the results back, or both, either uh, in one shot, avoiding network round trips. These are the types of aggregation. Uh, uh, since uh, there is a lot of time constraints, so I'm just you know, uh, skimming across this. Metrics aggregation, pipeline, matrix, and bucket. So matrix is like just providing the statistics of the aggregation. Pipeline is like the aggregation of aggregations. Matrix is like uh, providing a matrix out of the number of documents uh, that is uh, doubtful whether it will be there in the uh, next versions or not. And we have bucket aggregation. Bucket is a set of documents. And it will just run an aggregation on a bucket or, a, on, a, or on a particular set of documents. Uh, so uh, we have analysis, which is uh, like converting a text to terms or tokens according to a given filter. So these are, uh, there are analyzers, normalizers, tokenizers, token filters, and character filters. Moving on to what, the are, what these are. Analyzer, whether uh, can be built in or custom. It is just a packet that is like uh, three, uh, which has three building blocks, that is character filters, tokenizers, and token filters. We'll slowly uh, come across this. A normalizer is like it only emits a single token and uh, it requires the use of token filters. Tokenizer is like just uh, taking a text and you know uh, dividing it into uh, unique tokens. Uh, there are many types of tokens that we come across. This is just a very small subset of the tokenizers that we have. Uh, there are token filters. Like uh, this accepts a set of tokens from the tokenizer and can modify them. You know, just uh, do it o a lowercase or just, you know, remove stop words, remove uh, some words that are being repeated. And we have character filter, which, have, uh, which are used to pre-process the stream of characters before it is passed to the tokenizer. We have HTML, HTML strip uh, card character, which is an example, which is just you to know, uh, remove the opening and closing tags in HTML and also uh, we have, uh, suppose we have, uh, uh, you know, patterns such as uh, ampersand epos. It just converts it to apostrophe. Um, moving on to scan and scroll API. So uh, the scan search type and the scroll API are used to, you know, uh, retrieve large number of documents from Elasticsearch efficiently without paying the price of deep pagination. Scroll is like, you know, uh, sending multiple requests and uh, just giving us the request till you know we reach the end, uh, we reach the end of the page. page. Uh, then we have scan. This just removes the costly part of deep pagination. Um, so this just makes the tasks really easier. So uh, I hope this was not too fast for you. St still, uh, we have 12 minutes left. Uh, I'm handing over the control to Anisha. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh we will uh, discuss about some of the performance enhancement techniques uh, that we can use to enhance the performance of indexing, searching, and uh, uh, make it uh, less expensive for us. So uh, generally, uh, these are the don'ts that we shouldn't do while uh, using Elasticsearch. We uh, shouldn't return large number of data set at a time. Instead of that, we should use scan and scroll API so that we can uh, uh, get uh, some data. And then again, using a particular ID, we can fetch another set of data. Uh, second is indexing large documents. So indexing a la very large amount of document can uh, uh, effectively uh, Sorry, effect the performance in a high uh, amount. So instead of that, what uh, uh, max the max content length of a document is uh, uh, de by default 100 MB, but we can uh, scale it up to 2 GB by some setting. But it is expensive, right? Like we can have memory more memory usage and more uh, stress on network. So we should know what exactly to index, and uh, we should index uh, those the whole document uh, the whole data in like small small parts. So as Manashini has already showed you that uh, scoring, so scoring as the score uh, uh, shows uh, how 
efficiently we have searched the whole documents like what's the score of the document that we uh, searched or filtered so scoring uh, might not be consistent because when you search for uh, a data it might uh, go to replica shards or a primary shard uh, depending uh, depending on your search so uh, elastic search has a setting of uh, uh, pre preference so that if uh, a particular user is uh, logging in with its id uh, the search will go to that particular uh, shard so that you can get a consistent scoring and each shard is responsible for its own scoring so uh, the scoring of a document in a shard is uh, uh, de depends on the uh, index statistics so either we have to uh, index uh, all the shards with a uh, a same index statistics or we have to go through the all the shards and get a relative uh, uh, index statistics with dfs query then fetch so indexing perf uh, indexing performance enhancement to index the performance of indexing we shouldn't try to we should try to put bulk requests but again uh, we have to uh, figure out the optimal amount of bulk requests that we can get so it's a trial and run process we have to run a benchmark and get our optimal size we should use multi thread system but again keep a watch on too many requests because it can throw an exception uh, so if it is throwing an exception you can pause and again resume should increase refresh intervals uh, refresh intervals is uh, uh, elastic search periodically refresh the indices which receives more one or more than searches in previous 30 second so either it's a good way to do it when uh, your site has less traffic or increase the refresh interval and yeah we should we shouldn't create replica shards at the first we should uh, disable the replica for initial load i know it's a little risky but uh, we uh, it's a uh, very good for uh, enhancing the performance of indexing uh, and we can use a technique called index generation to uh, like lower the risk and uh, make a replica shard according to the updated document so there are some more points like uh, shouldn't do uh, swapping should uh, allocate more memory to the file system cache for buffering input output operations and uh, it's a good practice to use auto generated ids by elastic search so that it doesn't have to go and check for duplicacy and uh, yeah of course faster hardware and virtualized storage works with better uh, input output per second works uh, pretty better with elastic search uh and we should also uh, keep check on cluster he health of elastic search uh, because uh, if a node uh, goes down then uh, it takes some uh, some time to uh, initialize uh, the uh, initialize it again so at that time it would be yellow but it should be green when it's having primary and replica sh replica shards disable merge throttling uh, so if we are having problem in uh, merging then we should uh, disable merge throttling for some time but again it's a trade off because it might degrade the search performance thread pulling rejection error comes when we send too many requests to your nodes uh, at a faster rate so either uh, we can scale the nodes or uh, slow down our process of sending the requests disk usage so um should disable to preserve disk usage uh, we should disable unnecessary feature like we if we want to create a histogram out of numeric value then we don't need filtering so we should disable indexing in string by default they have normalizers but if we don't want normalization then we can disable norms so we should also avoid dynamic string mapping because it uh, maps every string as uh, text and the keyword so we can specifically give our template for uh, string mapping we should disable source if we don't need original json and uh, or we can use best uh, compression for uh, taking negligible spaces uh, force merge api reduce the number of segment per shard which is physical memory which a shard uh, have shrink api is used to reduce shards per index uh, we should uh, use uh, to uh, decrease the disk usage we should use smallest uh, numeric type and uh, yeah <coughs> excuse me so if data nodes are running low on disk then we have to uh, add more data nodes to, uh, to our cluster and scale it horizontally so uh, or uh, 
if we have only certain nodes uh, running out of disk then it's so usually it's a sign that uh, we have initialized the index with very less amount of shards and we need to add on more shards uh, so yeah we can uh, uh, scale the LR. We, if uh, there are less uh, disk uses then uh, we sorry a uh, more disk uses then we can uh, scale the uh, they scale the nodes horizontally and uh, we can use rollover and alias for that so i think that's it for the performance constraint thank you <laughs> any questions Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So, how are the performance metrics for traditional relational data? Uh, like, will it work well for relational data also, or should we prefer an SQL over it? Yeah, it will work over relational data as well, but the only difference is it will be in a JSON format. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, what are the performance metrics compared to traditional SQL databases? Uh, have you used GraphQL ever? No. So. Uh, a GraphQL, uh, in a particular way, uh, there are a certain uh, constraints that we have uh, in relational databases. That is, uh, let me just take this up. Yeah, uh, that is uh, sometimes we have to, you know, fill in uh, null data. When uh, that is, it is uh, something that you have to give a particular data to a particular field. Like it is mandatory, but it is not mandatory when it comes to uh, Elasticsearch. That is, uh, a particular document can have a particular field or cannot have a particular field so basically it's schema less okay yeah hi uh, the question is very relevant to uh, elastic 7.x so uh, we, we are actually using the uh, the the nested indexing uh, with the elastic so uh, I, I it would be nice if you can just give gi gi give us some uh, best practice to search or uh, do filter queries in nested things so what we are trying to achieve is actually uh, to only get the component in the nested not as a pa uh, not as a parent in the result okay. while searching uh, uh, we have a similar kind of use case for our uh, we had a we had to index some uh, uh, directory structure so it was pretty nested as well so what we are doing is as i mentioned earlier if there is a range query I can just move that to a keyword or a term and then we, I can search that term instead of nesting. Uh, I can um, like elaborate you the whole structure that we are using after the talk because it might need pen and paper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you in offline. Yeah, Thank sure. you. Sure, this way. Yeah. Hey, we are using Elasticsearch in a and uh, I getting the same performance issue what you mentioned and uh, even I tried these most of the things I avoided lots of fields I have removed lots of fields then still I'm meeting the issue so uh, so uh, can you t just tell us the you know uh, pinpointedly the particular issue so after 30 days I'm getting the issue so I need to delete the data again I need to do a clean new setup then the problem is being resolving. Everything is the same order, everything is the same, only the data is matters. So whether we need to delete the data every particular days or something like that? So uh, there is a thing, if you uh, still need the old data, you can uh, use this snapshot and restore. That is the uh, functionality like that. So it will just take snapshot of old data and uh, it will uh, like, I'm not pretty much sure how exactly but uh, it stores it somewhere like in a compressed way and it uses it later or it's a good way to delete the data if you don't use it re-indexing concept is that is what you're talking about sorry, sorry, re-index not re-index it's uh, like a snapshot you're talking about yeah, okay. 